A lot of wind today, a lot of current. Really trying my luck post storm to see what's up. He's a really strong tide today. I do like it. Could be King Lizard. This is, this is what a uh, this is what we get up at 4:30 in the morning for, right? in there it's a little a little large of a lure for you to try to chomp down on don't you think orders 82 it's warm it's not seeing any bait here i wish i'm seeing some bait no bait on the flats today post storm so probably tomorrow there'll be bait you know how it goes after a storm it's really unpredictable the bite's kind of shifting based on where the, the good water might be bad water it might be a, a good adjustment period so more big tides hopefully when the water clears up salinity is going to go up and I don't know, it doesn't look too bad it doesn't look great either let's see if there's any sheep set on this channel marker though this does look like appropriate sheep set spot or two eight feet of water all these channel markers have them Set. Yep. Like I said, all these channel markers do have a few of them. Nice one. It's a good fish. No flats bite right now, but like I said, I think I'm, I ain't touching that flats until the, there's bait, you know what I'm saying? So, thanks. I'm gonna put this one back, I think. It tastes pretty good, but like I said, I'm just gonna keep one probably towards the end of the day. firm on the smaller side than that that guy was probably like 20 inches or so i think i'm gonna make the call to do some sheep's head fishing all right so i haven't fished docks all season really but there's usually just so many docks to choose from especially if you just want to like goof around bottom fish sheep's head fish it's hard to run out of real estate on that sort of stuff too i, don't know, I think i'm gonna focus on like 8 to 15 feet probably that was toadfish, probably. Okay, got a couple sheep up there then. This dude was suspended probably 10 feet down. He got me. Okay, one down. It's definitely a sheep's head, I think. By the way, cut me. Put me up on that piling. Some suspended fish here. Big ones too, huh? Big 
a lot of the fish here are suspended five, six feet down probably. That means the oxygen's not good if they don't want to use the deeper part of the water column. That's my take on it. I mean, like they love to suspend, don't get me wrong, but I feel like it can be anywhere in the water column too. Here is a sheep's head. Yeah, 20, 18 feet suspended down. Like a crab for a sheep's head. They love their crabs. That's a sheep's head, he's big. Well, we're, at, we're in the clear now. First step is getting away from a piling and start reeling, right? It's gotta be a drum. Yeah. Black drum. Light hit, geez Louise. Really light, small black drum. It's croaking. Yeah, the black drum are kind of hard to dial in on the summertime. It's like, we're definitely one of the cold water fish we have. As, a, as in, I prefer that temperature in the 60s, maybe low 70s. Not really hot water, 80s plus. There's a toad fish here, don't mean it's over. Nice to see a few this size again. Wow. Old school. I'm feeling nostalgic looking at a croaker this size. You know, 12 inches or so, 12 and a half. And we'll start seeing some 14s again. It'll be nice. Well, maybe we'll find a big croaker hole. Nice. Keep this one. The perfect size to eat. Go bleed them out. This is a bunch of sheep's head here. It took me a minute to find them. Big school of them at least.
we're up to the size we want to eat, honestly. Those bigger ones go. Keep these, you know, two pounders or so. These have great fillets on them too. All right, I'll keep, I'm gonna keep like two or three. All right, kept two, so we keep one more. Not still good. Okay, all I'm doing is breaking off this claw. All right, going right there through the belly. Just waiting for the, these are, these, you know, one to two pounders are hard. I think there's a pretty large school of these guys here. Give him a second there. Don't to wait till that weight's there. I waited too long. These smaller ones are really hard. Let's just hang on, weather. Just hang on for a little bit for me. Nice. Gonna keep one more. All right, knocked my scissors in the water. Okay, third sheep's head for dinner. There's like a huge school of these, you know, 10 to 14 inches here. Wait, I know it's in his mouth. It should be him. Yep. Oh no, don't get me, don't get me. Don't get me, that's a nicer one. Yeah. Oh, I pulled him, perfect actually. Would have released him anyway, but that was definitely a better fish. Hold, that hook's a little dull. So those other sheep said that were suspended were really tough. These ones are a lot easier. Because they're on the bottom. The bottom sheep said are as easy as it gets. Suspended ones are definitely trickier. But these seem to be mostly this size, minus the one I lost. Yeah, but these are better to eat. I don't feel bad about killing an old fish. Everybody wins. It's fun to catch the big ones, but I like to makes sense to put those back right at least to me something's eating it something's eating it stick them ah oh, yeah there he is this ones need love too usually I don't find giant schools like this in the summertime I mean sometimes you do post-storm stuff more thunderstorms coming this fish seem to be deeper not in the eight feet there's a few here in eight feet i think but i think the majority of them are in that 
10, 10 plus. I'm not even cracking shells, man, just getting right there. A few feet off the piling. Most of them are off this piling even. Drop it down, hit bottom. Just wait. Wait till the rod loads up. This probably would be easy without the wind, but without the wind, I bet they wouldn't be here. You know how that goes, right? Oh, this is hard. <laughs> this is really hard. I can't like get on this zone properly. Here and there I am. All right, I think I got it again <laughs> for now. It's like I'll get like two, three minutes with proper positioning and then the boat goes by, wind changes, something. These are small ones right now. I don't like these smaller bites. Yeah, it's no good, whatever this is. Puffer fish. That's who makes the hook point dull. They got such strong teeth. You catch a couple of those, doesn't matter what hook is on there, that hook point will go dull. These fish are real funny today. Really soft bites. All right, I think it's the last one I'm gonna keep right here. Nice. Really, a lot of these are the same class. All right, so that means four for the table. So I'll put back my early ones for a reason, All right? They're, they're quite long, those are quite larger and I'd rather let those go. But these guys are about 14 to 15 inches. So these are better to eat and you know, these are the abundant size, so. It's one of those ones that I don't think they'll be in trouble in my lifetime. Could be wrong. I just think there's so much abundant structure there on different types of structure like the ones on ledges and oysters they don't get much pressure it's really the dock ones and maybe like occasionally spear fishing jetties stuff like that so these ones get more pressure but the amount of fish that are on ledges and all that stuff it's a ton so anyway i'll put those bigger ones back as always though very rarely do i keep a big one so all right that's the last one i'm keeping let's goof around a little bit until more thunderstorms come up it's post storm man sheep said drum it's a thing to do. Okay, let's bleed this guy out, get these guys on ice, and I think we're done keeping fish for the day. This is a quarter ounce bottom sweeper. I'm using that pen clash. I love these clashes, minus the line roller. Now, I got a lot of snarky comments the other time. I said, I don't like Shimano's, or you're sponsored by pay. I bought all these pen reels. Mud crabs have been really hot, hard to get because of the big tides. So, fiddlers it is, which are, they're not bad. They're my number two choice. That line hanging off that dock is kind of, got to be careful. This fish might have left on me. Yeah, I think these fish are gone, guys. Just like that tide, tide changed or stopped or switched or whatever happened here, these fish literally disappeared. I'm not like seeing the schools anymore. Look like one or two times I saw them and it looked like they were left. Lost that school, guys. I lost it. I got into these little micros now. Could be out here somewhere too. There's so much stuff they can move off onto. You know what I'm saying? Kind of limits a lot of what you can expect to bump into when you have that, that darker, murkier water. A lot of puffer fish today too, and they, they dull these hooks um, with their beaks, so. Missed a lot more fish than I should have been paying more attention to my, my hook points too. I think I ended up with like seven sheep's head for the day. Um, just kept some 14s. I had a couple other bites on that dock where there was suspended, but the current was really fast. It was not easy to get down there to, to locate them and all that stuff. So still it's a beautiful day to go fishing. I like that overcast. Definitely got to put some time in, man. That's what it's all about. That was pretty good. It was pretty interesting though. As soon as that tide switched, I, it felt like I had an unlimited supply of sheep's head under the kayak to zero. So, yeah, I, I assume that there's two types of sheep's head or a lot of bottom fish do something similar in my opinion. You can have like a small pack of fish that are kind of localized, they have a home, and then you have a pack of fish that move. 
they're more hunting or migratory or just cruising those are usually the larger schools that was a very large school of those sheep's head but those fish are the ones that are always on the move and then you have your more localized ones like probably the one i picked up the first two i got this morning probably those are the like the local fish that live on pilings they don't move much then you get these huge schools of fish that are cruising hunting feeding etc so all right guys thanks for watching i'll catch up with you guys on the next video